1. Hello everyone. Coming off of a Saturday night shift where I was the only waitress in the entire interior of the restaurant. It's not a huge interior, but nine tables are at least four top capacity. So I was pretty busy last night. Anyway, I had a couple come in. Couldn't have been more than 25 years old. I myself am a 21-year-old female. The man and woman order two flavored teas, so I have to get tea and find syrup from the bartender and mix them. And it's a rush at this point, so it took a few minutes, but I got them the drinks. They order, I leave, yada yada yada. I come by a few minutes later to check up, and the girl whips out her phone and pretends to be texting the entire time I'm at the table. While the following happens. I ask if everything's going okay. The guy starts acting really weird, talking super slowly and shaking his head and acting almost sad. Mmm, did... Did you put any syrup in these teas, or...? I did. But if it isn't strong enough, I'd be happy to bring you some more syrup. No, I just... You didn't bring us anything to mix it with, and... Ugh. I did mix it, but I can bring you some straws or more syrup. No, uh... Still making a face and looking weird. If you'd like, I can bring you waters instead and take these off your tab. No, I, I just... You kind of walked away while she... He gestures to his girlfriend, still pretending to text this entire time. Was still ordering, like, sauces. Oh, I'm so sorry, I must not have heard. They're super easy to get, so I can ring them in right now. What do you want, ma'am? He then tells me the sauces, I apologize again, and walk away. He calls me over again and acts weird and kind of apologizes, but is still acting weird, and saying I forgot their drinks earlier and stuff. The girl again pretends to text this whole time, and I finally say if they are dissatisfied with my service I can get a manager for them, politely, and he says no. I explain I'm the only waitress in the restaurant and I'm trying my best, and just want to find a resolution to the situation. I continue checking up on them, and the girl put her empty cup on the edge of the table upside down, and I brought more drinks. They eventually ask to talk to a manager, and the girl tells her I had a terrible attitude and this service was awful, etc. The manager asks if they're trying to get their meal comped, and they refuse and say they will pay. My manager again explains that I am the only waitress and we are trying our best being short-staffed, but they drone on forever. They not only stiff me, they leave a strike-through on the tip line of an over $50 ticket. I don't know what the deal is, but I think the girlfriend didn't like me. It seemed she was complaining to him and he was relating them. And they didn't want resolutions, but she did want me to get in trouble. I even wrote thank you on their check. Just a weird interaction I had tonight. 2. This is from a few years ago, when I briefly served for a year at a family-owned restaurant. I come in for my shift, and as soon as I get in, one of the owners tells me I have a party of 20 tonight, and to hurry up and set up the banquet room. I get it ready, and I'm told that due to the fact that I have this party, I can't take any other tables for the rest of the night, because it would be unfair to the other servers. I'm okay with that. I'm just stoked that I have a big party and would be able to make a good buck that night. However, all the red flags were slowly revealed to me as the evening progressed. Firstly, it was revealed to me that the party was booked weeks in advance, so I found it strange that I wasn't informed until right when I walked in, day of. We were always informed days if not weeks in advance so as to prepare, and they always asked us if we even wanted it first. Then, I'm also told that the party is for the family of another server's daughter's friend. This immediately alerted me because he, we'll call him Jerry, was working that night. So why wouldn't he take his own daughter's friend's family party? And this guy Jerry, fucking Jerry, he's the type of guy that could turn the most timid, nicest people into murderers, I swear to God. Literally, everyone in the restaurant hated him except the owners. He was the worst of the worst to work with. He was close friends with the owners and was also their tenant, and they quite literally let him get away with anything. The first time I tried complaining to them about his antics, 
I was told exactly this with no exaggeration to play up the story whatsoever. Listen, I don't want to hear anything bad about Jerry. I don't care what he does. You just let it fly over your head and pretend like you didn't see it. He makes me money, and I would fire you in a heartbeat over him. He could steal your tables, take an entree from you if he needs it, whatever, I don't care. And you just let it be, and keep it moving. Now that you've got an idea of Jerry, son of a bitch, you can grasp how I was beginning to feel. So I'm fully set and ready, and the family is running extremely late. They're already about two hours past where they were supposed to arrive. I'm just hanging around, occasionally helping someone run food. It was busy as hell that night. Every server was fully stacked with tables, and later told me it was the most they made in months. While waiting, I decide to ask that donkey fart while he's not taking the party if it's for his daughter's friend. He just flatly, without looking at me, goes, Because I don't want it. So I told them to give it to you, you'll see why. And walks off. Here we fucking go. Now I'm pissed and I know tonight's gonna be a shit night. But I still try to put out positive energy and provide good service. They finally get here. And the only thing I will say to describe them is that they did not look like the kind of folks who visit nice restaurants very often. Ding 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 ding. Nor did they look like they were ready to spend some money. They basically just looked as though Denny's or Waffle House would have been a better option for them. Now, now, before you rush to the comments to call me a snob or an elitist, please bear in mind I had to deal with these folks all night. And this is coming from a place of very jaded hindsight. As soon as I get them all seated and go to the back, Jerry walks by with the biggest grin and just says, Told ya, and laughs. I say screw it and go into full-blown customer service mode, and it was incredibly difficult. I knew I was in for a treat when almost everyone got waters and while viewing the menu, the woman who made the reservation and organized the party shouts at her niece and nephew that You better get something cheap because I don't got mono like that. The night just got worse from there, with Jerry talking shit and laughing at me every time we passed each other in the server location. Surprisingly, my guests were actually mostly pretty polite but incredibly needy and persistent. Everyone wanted everything they asked for immediately after asking, all simultaneously. And if I came back with some stuff, every person whose stuff it wasn't would immediately begin telling me that I forgot theirs. It was the most frustrating serving experience I'd ever had. So then, obviously, the ordering was a shit show. Two total entrees were ordered, with the rest being either a single app as dinner or just a cup of coffee, or just a single beer to drink, which is awesome. The lady who booked the party even ordered an a la carte side salad, and a side of chicken tenders because it was two dollars cheaper than ordering a chicken salad. Crazy part being that if she ordered the chicken salad, it would have been equivalent to about four of those little side salads, and with more chicken. I'm hanging in there as best I can psychologically, while also busting my ass and providing perfect service. Jerry is still being my peanut gallery for the night. Finally, I'm getting checks organized, which were all separate, obviously. And Jerry's laughing and pointing at the point of sale, saying stuff like, I know that guy, he's not giving you anything, watch. And he was right. But my patience ran dry at this point, and I completely lose it. I had crazy face, where the whites around my eyes were all showing. The head chef, who I was living with at the time, all the servers and all the bus kids were all in the server station with us. And it was bustling and loud in the dining room. And we had live music going, so I was able to scream without anyone really noticing. I just go, Jerry, if you say another word to me for the rest of the night, a single fucking word, I will drag you out into the dining room and fuck you up in front of everyone. Do not fuck with me, you piece of shit! And I truly meant it. Everyone got quiet and stared, and he immediately walked away, and said nothing to me for the rest of the night. I finally get all the checks out to them, and after an eternity of payment processes, denied cards, and insanity, it finally came to the point of them getting out the door. Which they did not. They actually stayed until we closed. Luckily, they were pretty nice to me overall, despite a ton of super awkward interactions that I smoothly reacted to, and their incessant need of minuscule things at every moment, 
But niceness don't pay the bills, baby. They finally start packing up to leave and collectively tell me that I gave amazing service and that I made their evening great and then everybody clapped. Literally. They all applauded for an awkward amount of time as I did that scrunched up flat-lipped facial expression that's known in memes as what white people do when making eye contact with strangers. It was weird, but actually a little morale boost considering how over that night I was. At this point, no one who paid with a card left any tip, so I was praying to every god on the planet that perhaps they were waiting to tip in cash. Then I see a couple of them start reaching for money and I felt some relief. One of the two people who actually ordered entrees gave me $10, which was acceptable considering their bill was only about $35. Now my hopes are sky high as I'm clinging to rosaries begging for this night to at least turn out okay. Another woman gives me $5. Shitty, but okay. There's still a chance. There's 16 more people. Two children, so I didn't count them. A guy gives me $2, but he only ordered a $3 coffee, so I'll take that as a win. At this point, people are just leaving without even looking at me. People with bills that were in their 20s were just walking right by me. I was near the door, without leaving even a dime. My heart is sinking, but I already accepted it at this point. Finally, the hostess is the last to leave. Her bill was about $40, as she paid for herself and the two kids. But her card got declined, and she had to ask the guest of honor, her grandma whose birthday they were celebrating, if she could have the difference. She comes up and thanks me for everything, and says everything was perfect, yada yada yada. I get a last ditch effort boost of hope that maybe she'll give me an appreciation piece that would somewhat make up for everyone else not tipping. I mean, the total of everyone's stuff was over $20, or 20 fucking people, and I really did hide my frustrations well and gave them great service. I sang happy birthday with them, had strange conversations with them, realistically fake laughed at their jokes, etc. Then she nervously looks up at me, reaches in her wallet, pulls out two dollars, hands it to me, and quickly bolts out the door. I go back into the banquet room to clean, and I can still see them out in the parking lot. They all have nice new cars, and are just laughing up a storm, and having a fun post-party chat. So all in all, I made $19 out of a combined total of roughly 220 or so. I was pretty much completely defeated after that. Cleaned everything with my bus kids. They refused to tip out as they witnessed everything firsthand. No matter how much I tried, they just refused and patted me on the shoulder and said no. I actually miss working with those kids. So yeah, it was pretty much the worst night of me serving I ever had. My bartender hit me off by exceeding my one free post-shift beer limit tremendously. I got wasted and waited for my chef, and we bounced and that was it. I still think about that night every now and again, and sometimes... I wish I had beat Jerry's ass in front of everyone in the dining room. Motherfucking Jerry. 3. I work at a sushi restaurant. I actually do like my job. I like to joke around with customers and talk about food. Woman comes in with what I assume are her three kids. Everything is going well. They get the food relatively quickly. They're happy. I'm checking in every now and then, refilling drinks, etc. until the end. One of the rolls they ordered was too sour... They had already eaten half of the roll. She wanted a refund. There is only one proper response in this situation. Oh, okay. And remember you tried something and you didn't like it. These things happen. Restaurants do things differently. There have been plenty of times where I don't like the way a restaurant has made a dish I liked. But I wasn't going to make a fuss. I don't have to eat the food, but people worked hard to make sure I got it in the first place. She does not hit me with the oh, okay. She's complaining that she's been coming here for 20 years. The place has been open much shorter than that. And that she knows her sushi and we did it wrong. This is all with an earshot of the sushi chefs who are damn good at their job. A little biased because I work there, of course, but the sushi is pretty damn good. She keeps going. I keep saying we can't refund it. You already ate it. I'm your waiter, this shit ain't up to me. She decides she's going to go for a smoke and then come back. One of her kids apologized to me, Kid clearly looked embarrassed. I said not to worry, and... 
to not think poorly of your mom. The manager that day is one of my friends from college and the reason I have the job in the first place. It's been nice to have the income during the pandemic. I feel terrible sending my friend over, but we both know what we're in for. She doesn't want them mistreating me either. My friend also had a rough, rough day on Monday, where I was not present, with a new hire that wasn't trying to do her job and was making it harder for everybody else. She needed to blow off some steam. We had both agreed to take a shot of liquor after we finish work. Neither of us drive to work. And I feel like something was going to happen. After a few more minutes of this woman being extra nasty to her, she just gave up and cancelled the $7 roll and told her to keep in mind not to order it if she ever comes back. This is a $7 roll on a $130 check. The single most minor part of the meal, everything else, was $13 or more. And she had to give us a hard time. This woman failed to pick her battles. She had to take a stand on one leg against two strangers who were just following rules and making sense. You can't eat your fucking food and then ask for a refund. I can't stop her from dying on this hill. She pays in cash. They get up to leave. And she gives me a piece of her mind. You shouldn't be so rude, etc., etc. All that's Karen having to let me know. But then her kid, her shitty fucking kid, not the one who apologized to me earlier, looked at me and said, Suck my dick! I'm walking by them and holding an empty takeout container. I throw it into the ground hard and walk away. I can't yell at a mom in front of her kids. It just doesn't feel right. I'd feel awful if that was my mom, even if my mom was in the wrong. I'm having a panic attack now, breathing heavy, tears rolling down my face. I have trouble handling words like that, even from strangers. And even when I'm definitely in the right. I'm walking around the basement for five minutes, thinking it's safe to return. So I surface. My friend is heated. I think it's me at first, and I wouldn't blame her. I threw something and ran away. And I was really embarrassed about it. Face wet from tears and feeling awful. She wasn't. She was pissed at the customer and she chased her out. I feel bad that happened with the kids there, but she stood up for me. And I felt really good about it. Even though I was apologizing and very embarrassed at my behavior, my friends standing up for me when I was upset touched my heart. I've blown up at people before, everybody has. But I don't think I've gotten that kind of support before. I've just apologized for being angry even when I felt like I was right. There was a table of four young women right next to the problem table, but the other waitress took over for me because I was shaken up, still crying a little, breathing heavy. This gave me angry hiccups, which just made me cry and breathe heavier. When that table left, they left a good tip. I made sure to apologize. That wasn't on the restaurant, that's on me. I shouldn't be childish and throw shit no matter what, but all I heard from one of them was, no, you were right, she was a bitch, and I felt a little better. 4. This isn't fully my story, it's mainly my co-workers, but I'm telling it based off of what I experienced, since I unwillingly got myself involved because I was serving them their drinks. This happened a few hours ago. Today was a very, very hot and muggy day, and all day I hoped for a massive thunderstorm, so that the events that were going to be held today get cancelled. Sadly, it didn't go as planned. Luckily, it would rain every now and again, so the temperature would cool down for a bit, but heat up again. Everyone is stressed out and ready to go home because of the heat, bugs, and events. Well, not all the Bayho shifts end at 4pm. Amber is one of them, and her bay is seated with a group of guys. Normally, guests are allowed to play for an hour, and if they like, they can extend their time, if there isn't an event that's being held in the bays they're at. Well, Amber already told them when she sat them down at their bays that, as mentioned, maybe they can stay longer if an event isn't starting soon before taking their orders, letting them golf, having fun, and occasionally checking on them. Around 30 minutes left of their session, Entitled Guy 1 asks Amber, So can we extend our time? You may be able to extend your session, but there's an event starting soon, and they might have these bays reserved. I'll have to ask my manager, but if you have any more questions, I'll answer them as best as I can. They tell her that's fine and just order more drinks. 
so Amber takes their orders and walks away to roll silverware, and assisting the other bay host. Fifteen minutes rolls around and they weren't given a prompt to extend, meaning there is an event being held in that area. They call Amber over and want to extend their time. I'm sorry, but it looks like there's an event being held here and I'm not allowed to extend your session any further at this current bay. But if you'd like, I can move you to an open area and you can continue your session there. Entitled Guy 2 chimes in. But you said that we can extend our session at 15 minutes. It didn't prompt us to extend our session. I told you that maybe you can extend it, but if the event is being held here, you can't extend it. Entitled Guy 3 adds... What kind of bullshit is that? You told us we're allowed to extend our session and we want to extend it now. That's what we're paying for, to play golf, not to be moved around just because someone wants to have a party here. Enter Entitled Guy 4 who tries some fake nicing. It's alright guys, let it go. We can always come back and play another time. With that, Amber thought it had ended. Nope. They waited until Amber walked away, and as I'm bringing their last few drinks over to them, Entitled Guy 4 asks me, Hey, is there any way for you to extend our golfing session? Me being a caddy, aka drink server, don't have the authority to extend the times for gaming sessions. But I can help them extend sessions, or let the bay host know of problems the guests are having. Which is what I assumed was going on, and said, I'm sorry, but I can't do that. I'll get your bay... We don't need her to help us. We just want to extend our playing session. If you can't help us, then just leave us alone. I'm confused and take the drink tray and walk off. I notice Amber nearby, so I quickly go over and make sure the guys didn't see us, before telling her about what the guys said to me and about her. Amber was clearly upset about this and tells me she'll deal with it. So I head back to the beverage station to continue running drinks, before long, I hear Amber and Diane walking in, talking angrily about the guys. Apparently, they tried to get Diane to extend their time too, but she had heard what Amber told them and said no to them, which caused them to get mad at her too. After a few more minutes, the guys' session is over, but they refused to leave and wanted to stay longer, or demanded to get a full refund on everything. Amber refused to because their tab was already very long, and trying to refund an amount that big is very tricky, as well as frustrating to do, especially after the session already ended. Still, the guys refused to listen or leave, so Amber was forced to get her manager Tina to go and speak with them. Because by now, they were just sitting at the bay, with the event just about to start in a couple minutes. The guys started making demands about wanting refunds and compensation, saying I did extend their time, but Amber removed it when it hit the 15-minute mark, which was a lie. Luckily, the manager, even though she'd only worked there for a few months, she knew these guys were lying because she dealt with these kinds of guys back at her original venue back in Vegas and talked them into leaving or get banned for good. It worked, and the guys left with no refunds. 5. We had a bad experience with the table on Sunday. All four people at the table gave us a one-star review, and in each of the reviews, they included distinguishing physical descriptions of me, including the date and time I was there. One mentioned that I was approximately 5'6", and I'm way shorter, so kind of flattered on that front. They also had a friend that was never at our bar leave a review, saying we kicked her out after 30 minutes, even though she paid for her beer and everything. We probably haven't kicked anyone out in a whole year before this table. They claimed that I was rude to them from the moment they sat down, that I was angry that they ordered an appetizer for food. They also had beers among many other completely fabricated details about our bar. Things that could not be misunderstandings, but are apparent blatant lies on their end. Now I like my job, I like being nice to people. I hate conflict and do almost anything in order to keep the peace, at work and out of work. If their interpretation of me was genuine, then I'd be frankly horrified, and would have a good old identity crisis coming my way if I thought I came off this way. But I'm confident that I do not. It's a whole clusterfuck. I was the first to help them, check their IDs, and I took their beer and food order at the same time, so I can see how they thought I was the one that took issue with them. But outside of informing my co-workers that one person at their table did not show an ID and was not drinking, I had nothing to do with the drama that ensued. I reported the reviews to Yelp, to which they denied my request to remove, 
I've worked there for two years. I have the complete support of my boss and co-workers. So I'm not concerned on that front. But I do believe that their intent is to get me fired and to permanently damage my reputation, which I am pretty upset about. I don't want regulars or new customers to see these embarrassing and very brutal reviews. If I had some ownership over the situation, that would be another issue. But I believe I did nothing wrong, so it's shitty that they've blamed it all on me in a public forum that is ending up to be very permanent. I'm hoping anyone has advice, or there are other options and routes to getting reviews removed, aside from my boss having to do it. He may be pursuing this already, but I'm not sure. He's been doing a lot to deal with the customers in question, and publicly responding to their Google reviews. My boyfriend is saying it's a rite of passage to make me feel better. But even then, I could have at least been rude and shitty. Hey everybody, Halfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Spinning Plates, episode 137. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Okay, I will be dropping a Twitch link to have the author of story one into the description. Uh, feel free to give that a little, a little, a little click-see. Is that a word? You know what? It's a word now. Give it a little click-see if you have time. Uh, that would be Reddit user the cops. Well, you better do it as the cops. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I believe we have a, a little birthday shout-out. Getting quite a lot of these recently, aren't we? Uh, let's see. I, ooh, I better check to see if they want me to say their name. I know their name, but I don't know if they want me to use that as their username. Uh, a little search. I think Bill's have another birthday shout-out in a few days. Aha! Uh -huh. There we are. Ah, okay. Yes, their name is Kieran. Right, let's see. All right, uh, our friend Kieran turns 30 on the 29th, which is today. Of course it's today. That's when I do the shout-outs. Well, happy birthday to you, Kieran. Uh, they point out that I, I seem to have called them Russian Nephew on Discord. I think that's because their name was written in kind of like a, a Russian-esque font. Well, I hope whatever you're doing on your birthday, Kieran, you have a very happy and pleasant time. May your day be filled with joy and family and hookers and cocaine. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kieran. Happy birthday to you. Alrighty, I think I'll wrap things up there for now. Ah, <sighs> mellow feeling after a thing. Oh, it's so ah, lovely. Okay, so until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.